Diablo 4 Update 2.0.4 Patch Notes Release Time Date and Vessel of Hatred Changes Diablo 4 developer Blizzard is about to release another big update as it continues to improve Vessel of Hatred. Diablo 4 fans are counting down to the release of the game's next major update, which makes a ton of changes to the Vessel of Hatred expansion. Diablo 4 Update 2.0.4 has an October 29th release date on PS5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, and PC via Steam. The new update has a 5 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time launch time, and you won't be able to play online until you download and install the new patch. As you can see from the patch notes further down the page, the new update makes changes to both Vessel of Hatred and Season of Hatred Rising. This includes a reduction in health during Variana's acquisition quest, as well as the introduction of additional Nahanta-themed loading screens. Elsewhere, Blizzard has improved the descriptions for Undercity of Karas tributes, all the while fixing bugs for issues such as enemies not appearing and timers not starting. As for the base game, Blizzard has added another wave of Bloodbound Guardians in the Realmwalker encounter, and the Realmwalker's health has doubled. Blizzard has significantly increased the gem fragment cap, and increased the amount of damage required to force a dismount in the endgame. One of the more exciting changes is exclusive to PS5, as Blizzard introduces variable refresh rate support for the PlayStation console. According to Blizzard, VRR can be enabled for displays that support it by setting VRR to automatic in the console settings. You can check out the remaining Diablo 4 Update 2.0.4 patch notes below. Diablo 4 Update 2.0.4 patch notes. Variana's health during her acquisition quest has been reduced. Portal prankster chests in the Karast Undercity are now also affected by the act of bargain. Additional Nahanta-themed loading screens have been introduced to the rotation. The descriptions for Undercity of Karast tributes have been improved for clarity. Fixed multiple instances of missing or incorrect tooltips and icons throughout the Dark Citadel. Fixed an issue where the gloves of the Katra cosmetic item could be salvaged and lost. Fixed an issue where the Community Challenge pedestal could not be interacted with when playing on controller. Fixed an issue where completing Enclave of Strife could fail to unlock the Labyrinth of Souls. Fixed an issue where cosmetic rewards for Dark Citadel completion were sometimes not properly granted. Fixed an issue where Ferok did not cast Maze Malays consistently. Fixed an issue where stacks from the Incense of Rushing Wind did not properly expire. Fixed an issue where resplendent chests in the Dark Citadel did not drop Citadel coin caches. Fixed an issue where Longtooth could become temporarily invisible when using a specific attack. Fixed an issue where the primary resource bargain did not guarantee an item drop with the related affix. Fixed an issue where players could join a party while the party was in an active Karast Undercity run. Fixed an issue where players could join the party at the end of an Undercity run and still collect the rewards. Fixed an issue where only one player in the party would get credit for the Undercity introduction quests. Fixed a rare issue where Undercity runs could be started without activating the timer. Fixed an issue where various summon companions, such as spirit wolves, could grant attunement when dying or disappearing. Fixed an issue where the description for the Tribute of Titans did not include other sources besides lair bosses. Fixed an issue where the same mercenary could be displayed as hired and enlisted at the same time. Fixed an issue where progression could be blocked during Variana's acquisition quest after talking to Zolmik. Fixed an issue where bonus stats gained from a mercenary's passive could persist after dismissing them. Fixed an issue where the bartering quest did not grant rewards. Fixed an issue where how to unlock bartering was not clearly communicated. Fixed an issue where defeating the Blood Maiden after a Helltide ended would not progress the associated deeds of a champion quest objective. Fixed an issue where monsters in Chakir granted less experience than intended. Fixed an issue where the visual effects for Bloodhorn's Vortex could persist when not dealing damage at the end of the Forgotten Remains. Fixed an issue where the Sunbaked Overlook Cellar could not be completed. Fixed an issue where Spiritborn characters could not use the Hungering Necrolite's Cache. Fixed an issue where having points in acceleration in conjunction with boots granting additional evade charges could result in consuming evade charges when mounting. 
fixed an issue where spirit hall modifications applied by Harmony of Ebowaka were not displayed on the appropriate skills while mounted or in town. Fixed an issue where the aspect of deflection did not display damage dealt. Fixed an issue where the player could respawn behind an impassable barricade during the thrust into the dark quest. Fixed an issue where some Nahanta side quests did not grant renowned rewards. Fixed an issue where the All Good Things quest could not progress if the Collect Akarat's power objective was skipped. Fixed an issue in the Unknowing Survivor's quest, where the player could respawn in an inescapable area. Fixed an issue where the Scales of History quest became available at level 20, even though it requires you to craft an elixir with a level 40 requirement. Fixed an issue where the Harbinger of Hatred could get stuck in an unbeatable state on rare occasions. Fixed an issue where all monsters could drop Yurivar's orders after leaving the Buried Chamber during the Living Memory quest. Fixed a rare issue where Nayrel could get stuck during the Burning Crusade quest, which would block progression. Fixed an issue where followers during the Way Out is through quest could not dismount if the player was using a Necromancer with Summon Skeletal Skirmishers. Fixed an issue where items rewarded from quests had incorrect or missing inherent affixes. Fixed an issue where the Shrine Ambush event could not be completed if it appeared in the Putrid Body Pit Cellar. Fixed an issue where gems and runes could be swapped or removed from sockets in equipment lock content, such as the pit. Fixed an issue where boots acquired through bartering were missing the inherent evade modifier affix. Fixed an issue where the jeweler was present in the Karas Training Grounds room. Radiant chests at the end of Legion events now grant bonus loot and Zacharum Remnant's reputation to players with a Seething Opal active when the chest is opened. The description for Seething Opals now additionally indicates that the additional loot chance also applies to end-of-run loot, such as the Pit or Kurast Undercity. An additional wave of Bloodbound Guardians can now spawn in the Realmwalker encounter. The Realmwalker's health has doubled. The Gem Fragment Cap has been significantly increased. The amount of damage required to force a dismount has been increased to make forced dismounts less common in the endgame. Party Finder Quick List has been added for Infernal Hordes in the map. For PlayStation 5 users, we've introduced VRR, Variable Refresh Rate, Support. VRR can be enabled for displays that support it by setting VRR to Automatic in the console settings. When it is enabled, the frame rate can exceed 60 if it is within the VRR range for the display when enhanced visuals is disabled.